Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Curless Mania, where we talk all things pop, rock, and prog. We got another special episode lined up for you today. And as you can see, I've got a special guest, first time on the channel, Mr. Peter Jones. Hello, Tom. Great to see you. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Pleasure's mine. How are you today? Doing super. Hope you are as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Any day's a good day. We're talking about Led Zepp. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and that's what we're here to do today. We are here. Um, and by the way, I have to mention Peter, Peter's a, a great drummer. Uh, uh-huh. he's played for many, many years. Um, and uh uh he's got a video, I think it's on YouTube, right? Of, of you uh, warming up. I I forgot that it was there when I sent it to you earlier. Yeah. It's been yeah. kind of just sitting out there, but yeah. Playing a little Moby Dick. It's it's pretty cool. Check it out. It's out there. Thank you. Um, he's got some chops. So, um, so anyway, uh, we are here today to talk about uh, two excellent records by Led Zeppelin. Uh, I mean, every I mean, you could argue that every album in Led Zeppelin's catalog is pretty excellent. Um, but um, we today we are doing um, we are doing Zeppelin three versus Zeppelin four. Yep, these two gems right here. Yep, there we go. You got, you got the good ones there, and oh yeah, got the the reissues. Actually, I didn't buy the reissues with the extra. I don't know why I didn't get the extra bonus. They're good. They're fun. Yeah, all yeah. The- all my all my stuff's on high res downloads, so I've I've stopped with physical media. So I yeah. print it out. Oh, there you go. That's why you printed it out. Gotcha. Print out yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's like early mixes and stuff, right? It's kind yeah. of. Yeah. some good demo stuff and some other good things in there yeah yeah good stuff and they sound great absolutely uh, of course because jimmy page is at the control so um so that's the battle tonight the epic battle of of, of led zeppelin and um i'm going to do a quick brief history up into to to the time of led zeppelin three um essentially led zeppelin and you know jump in peter if you want sure. to um but essentially formed by jimmy page in in 1969 from the ashes of the yardbirds um you know uh, jimmy page was part of the yardbirds uh post eric clapton um he and jeff beck were together in that band for a while and then jeff uh bailed on the yardbirds um and they were sort of on their last legs but page was doing his best to keep them alive um and then finally i think keith ralph finally said i've had enough and he bailed during a tour or something like that and the yard birds were essentially no more but page got a taste after being a session musician he had he got a taste of being in a real band touring and he, he i think he really liked it and so, yeah jimmy he, has has said in a lot of interviews that post yard birds he had a very clear view in his head of what he wanted to do mm-hmm. he wanted to have a band of of extraordinary musicians um and play heavy harder blues rock and that's what his his goal was so absolutely i think he even had like he already had some songs that were already written and he knew he knew what to, like you say he knew exactly what he wanted to do he knew the direction he wanted to go all yeah. he had to do was get the players right so and he, all, he also had peter grant already right because peter grant was part of the yardbirds thing so he had him right. as a manager already right. so he already had the manager he already had the idea he already knew what he wanted to do so um he finally found robert plant um from on a you know on a suggestion from terry reed who was the original guy who he who he approached to right. thing i mean that, it's funny people know terry reed more for like turning down led zeppelin than anything else it's like right, right. <laughs> like that's why he's famous right the guy who turned down zeppelin well and he had a little caveat he because he had uh jimmy had found john paul jones and so when Terry was offered, he's just like, well, sure, but I'm going on the road with the stones. Um, you know, how about we talk when we get back? And Jimmy goes, Mm-mm, can't, can't wait. He goes, oh, okay. So, well, I've got this guy. And by the way, make sure he brings his drummer with him. And Terry said, make sure. And of course that was John Bonham. So, oh, Terry said that to him. Make Terry sure he said, "Make sure you bring his drummer." Oh, interesting. I didn't know that little tidbit. That's cool. Yep. Um, I knew that Terry Reed recommended Plant, but I didn't know he said yep. that. That's cool. But you got to uh, bring his drummer with him. Yeah, that's cool. And of course, he did. And thank God he did. Yeah. Um, 
And apparently uh, Bonham was playing with Tim Rose at the time and he was getting paid. He was like a good gig for him. It was like a pretty steady paying gig. He was happy with it. And Robert came to him and said, hey, man, I got this opportunity. you got to drop everything and treat. Come on. And he was like, no, I wouldn't know. I'm on a good gig right now. I'm not leaving. Right. <laughs> right. So he was, like, no, he was, no, also, he was <laughs> also clubbing around through a lot of bands with his old buddy, Cozy Powell. And the two of them took it as a badge of honors to see who could get banned from the most clubs for playing too loud. Yes, yes, yes exactly. <laughs> That's a lot. That was he was known for being a hugely loud drummer, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, so John Paul Jones, as you mentioned, session guy, he was also he sessioned with Paige back in the day, and he heard about it and called. Apparently, called and said, "I heard you're forming a band. I want to be part of it." Um, and he um, he was a huge the missing the final piece of the band and God oof, talk about secret weapon we'll talk more about him later. Uh, good Lord. Um, so they he rehearsed and realized they had something special very quickly um, and got a batch of songs together which like I said Paige is already you know working on songs. The story is is the first track they played together was Train Kept a Rolling. Yes. I'd heard that as well. And I, all of them were well aware that there was something happening <laughs> that yeah. was pretty magical. And we've, you know, we've been in bands, you know, if you get with the right person and the right material, something just kind of becomes otherworldly. And I could only wish what a fly in the wall that must have sounded like the first time all four of them fired up unbelievable i mean i can't I, and apparently they were all laughing after it like they knew they looked at each other and was like like you said you know when you we're playing with people that are the same level or or you're like oh man this is going to be good right you know so i can't like you said to be a fly on the wall in that rehearsal man Oof. um so anyway they end up recording quickly recording the first record and apparently recorded it all in 32 hours or something like that very it short really quick yeah because it was just like live band in the studio kind of thing. And they just already yeah. had great sound, you know? Um, as Andy John said one time, he goes, with Zeppelin, man, all you had to do was put up a mic and hit record. Right, right, <laughs> right. Like, it already sounded amazing, you know? Yeah, and we'll talk more about that as we as we go along. Absolutely. So, um, so anyway, debut, I'll get through this. Debut made a huge impression. They went on tour, won over the USA in like a heartbeat, like literally went on tour in the US and just wet word spread like wildfire this band is just friggin' amazing right and everybody i mean after the first tour they're already famous um they recorded the second album on the road apparently yep. um going to just here and there at studios when they could yep. um which is pretty unbelievable um incredible pace they were at at this point i mean i think once they found this thing they just went for it um so another u.s tour to promote the second album and that by this point they were huge i mean they were really big after the, i mean by the second yeah. album they were already massive um however they were exhausted because that to the first two, two albums and those first two tours just were you know they were working nonstop. um so i think they were pretty whooped so plant suggested that they take some time off to page and said go let's i, I know this remote cabin in wales called bronyar uh, and we can go there and just rest and relax, uh, bring your acoustic guitar and we'll just hang out and, you know, right. let's bring some, some of our roadies with us and some equipment and, uh, and just hang out, you know, and they did. And that's, that set the scene for the next record, basically when they had their acoustic guitars sitting outside by the, you know, with no electricity and they're just hanging out in this cabin, you know, writing songs. Yeah. So, you know, and one of the things Robert said is that as they went into those writing sessions that he said, we were obsessed with change. Mm -hmm. And that's really the driving force in how they were going through the material. Plus environment is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's hectic and, and rushed and crazy, it can come off hectic, rushed and crazy. But this is some of the most beautiful country in the planet. I mean, it's, you know, it's old stomping grounds for my old relatives out there in Wales. Um, you know, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because my relatives will roll over in the grave if I, but I, I believe it closes Brony A.R. Brony A.R. I never knew how to say it. Right? I, 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 I was listening to phonetics all day today and I still can't get it right. So sorry, ancestors. I really don't know. I, I call it Brony I don't know. Yeah, that's... 
it works we all know what you mean yeah so um so that takes us to, to 1970 so let's uh i'm gonna throw it over to peter now for your um for your take on led zeppelin three so so i got it super thank you well what we have here is this is an album of wide-ranging styles moods textures it's got rock folk mediterranean blues acoustic and electric compositions all used in a much more far-reaching manner than what the the previous two records were um it also sees a little more democratic uh allocation in the writing process is is jones and bonham have more into the writing credits here which was a change from the first two records um, recorded mostly at, at Headley Grange, and that's a super, that's an important place in their history. Uh, with the Rolling Stones mobile unit, yeah, it's the same Rolling Stones that you would hear in that little song called Smoke on the Water two years later. <laughs> um, you know, the album upon its release had a lot of mixed reviews. It was a huge change, and it was a very new direction in song styles, writing, delivery, instrumentation. Um, and Plant became very frustrated with a lot of the less than stellar reviews, so much so that he didn't grant any press interviews for the next 18 months. <laughs> That's a grudge. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. I have a, that had a huge ranging effect. Yeah. yeah. And so, so here we are. We, we open with this little track at two minutes and 26 seconds called The Immigrant Song which certainly over the years has even increased in popularity. I mean, obviously you put it in Thor, you put it in whatever else they're gonna use it for, but off it goes. But here it is, is this kind of intense, immense, driving yet simple and direct song. I mean, I love the fact that it's an F sharp <laughs> instead, of, instead of an E. Most metal or hard rock bands would have done it in E. It's easier with the open string and sure. everything else sure but it sounds more menacing in f sharp yeah. and i love that it's played that way super killer bass playing from john paul which is going to be something that's just going to carry through both of these records um pretty much the the rhythm part and i include page in that stays the same really the moving parts of it are are john paul jones of course, that beautiful ascending riff that he does is just gorgeous. And then, bam, right back into the riff again. Uh, it's, a, it's a legacy kind of feel for Bonham. This is kind of one that defines who he is. And I also think that it was an enormous influence on Hart's Barracuda. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And so, I mean, there are no drum fills. There's no guitar solo in this. Um, you know, it's basically you know, the story of Vikings and Norse mythology. And, you know, as Jack Black said, if any of you saw the Kennedy Center honors, Led Zeppelin was about making love. It was about Vikings. It was about Vikings making love. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that, that kind of explains it. I love the ending with the ooze, ooze, and they even throw in some of the little metal tritone when they go up to the C9. Nah, and you're like, okay. Oh, yeah. Hears. The hairs go up on the back. Um, so it's the great. shortest track on the record, but it's just open, close, punch, punch. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, an immense track live. Um, so that's a great, great song. And we instantly jump into a complete mood change. Uh, we get into Friends uh, at 355 in length. A very um, experimental track. Page was a master at discovering open tunings and alternate tunings. Here we have this call is the accidental C6, you know? So we'll go C, A, C, G, C, E for those guitar players who want to tune your guitar the correct way. You know, it's basically a, a driving acoustic with these beautiful string arrangements from Jones. Again, one of his strong suits arranging uh, Zeppelin's not Zeppelin without it um little hand percussion in the back as the song goes through but the real shining moment is plants hypnotic and spooky vocal delivery here and it's just kind of like it's almost like dry ice as it wisps 
across the, the you know the the moors or this floor of the stage you know metaphorically it's not really traditional in a song structure at all because it's it's just kind of a more of a a droney you know chordal underneath while it moves with the strings um it's also got great you know good syncopation these unison them right back into the riff love that stuff love it love yeah. it. yeah and so it's such a there was nothing remotely like this on the first two records no so no this one really comes out as the first real kind of ear surprise and you're like oh where are they going with this yeah and we get to track three celebration day we add jones to the writing credits here and this is a, a simple straightforward good hard rock and roll song uh i love how it opens with this great riff from jimmy it just adds plants vocals until the tension releases and in comes the rhythm section and off it goes um you know he creates bonham creates so much forward momentum on this it pushes without rushing and that's a an incredible skill um you know there's rushing and then there's propulsion or momentum they're not the same thing you know another gr great chorus huge bass playing from jones and more great syncopation da 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 and then right back in <laughs> man it's so tight um I, you know the the choruses in comparison to the verses just sound so open and free i said it was like letting the sun in you know you open the curtains and it's just like this big wave um you know it's just a strong song from top to bottom and i think it's got a lot of energy and i think it's one of their better tracks what a strange riff you know that yes it's like what is what is this it's so awesome no yeah and he would clearly carry over that kind of rhythmic motif to a lot of the tracks that are on physical graffiti yeah yeah um, a lot of that going on and but it was it was a style that he was apparently comfortable with <clears throat> and and wrote with ease because he was good at it oh yeah really good at it so we get to number four since I've been loving you and, you know, to me, it, I say at this point of their career, this is the ultimate blues track for them. Mm -hmm. um, it literally has everything that you would associate with, with a Zeppelin blues, uh, perfect feel, perfect groove from Bonham, not too fast, not too slow, uh, gorgeous, tasty keyboard work from Jones and the, the foot bass work that he's doing on the organ um and jimmy is just so tasty and you know people talk about well he's kind of sloppy eh, look that's a that's a that's a taste thing if you think he's sloppy cool if you don't you don't but he gets to this kind of playing tom and there's just something super magical that happens and you know the vocals from plant are exceptional it's got it's a awesome. massive dynamic range. Yeah. It yeah. goes from a whisper to just tear your head off. Yeah. All in the same song. I love that. Um, and I feel that it, it supplants uh, I Can't Quit You as their new live blues epic. Right. Um, yeah. And of course, <laughs> I have to mention the beautiful Ludwig Speed King pedal. <laughs> <laughs> You can hear it. You can yeah. hear it. Yeah. And those of us who had played Speed King pedals for decades and decades never left for a gig with our, our WD-40. <laughs> because you That's had to do it during sound check. True. Because I promise you, during a song, it would start to go. Yep. So uh, to me, this is fully authentic Zeppelin here. Um, different than the earlier blues songs, Tom, because... A lot of those were redos, some not credited appropriately until later, thankfully, um, were more appropriated from other blues songs. This one is, this is authentic Zeppelin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This comes from them and of them, and it's, it's spectacular. Um, we get to the last track on side one, and we get out on the tiles. And this is a really, really fun song. 
I've always loved this, and I love that it closes the side. Um, we get Bonham in a writing credit on here, and the story of this is pretty straightforward. Jason Bonham tells the guys he's with during the VH1 show, uh, Rockstar or whatever it was, uh, Supergroup, VH1 Supergroup, 2006. They, with Ted Nugent and Evan Swenson, uh, Scott Ian, uh, and Sebastian Bach, they wanted to play a Zeppelin song and Jason got permission from Jimmy Page to do Out on the Tiles. So they're like, oh, we get, we, get, we get to do a Zeppelin song. And he goes, and Jason goes, well, my dad came up with the riff. And he's like, well, what do you mean? He goes, this was something that John used to walk around singing. Mm -hmm. He'd make up his own lyrics because we're out on the tiles. I got a pint of beer and I'm feeling kind of bare because I'm out on the tiles. Well, Jimmy heard the riff, put a riff to it, added drums, added lyrics, and now we've got out on the tiles. <laughs> yeah, because Bottom gets writing credit. Um, yep, because yeah. that's his melody. Yep, That's his melody. And what is super cool about this is that a lot of times they will write riffs that turn around on top of each other. Yeah, and, you don't know where the one is. You're like, where's the yes. one? And what's great about this is there's this only one little bar and it's a tiny little secret. So all of you who are struggling, I'll debunk it for you. It's super. Da, 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 this time away, I walk a quiet mile with da, 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 one, two, three, one. Yeah, yeah. Barb three, eight. Because it goes right back into it. Right back into it. So that's the one you got to catch. So just play the bar of three three eighth notes you'll be right back on one you'll be good to go <laughs> that's good um, to know, Peter. that's good that's good information i like that i i love how it just drives at the end uh similar to how the end of bring it on home thunders away and i think it's just uh, an amazing track i love the energy i love how heavy it is and i like the long fade on it and i just they're just grooving yeah they go you know it. and this ends you have a hard time finding anybody's discography a better side uh, of any album than these tracks we just went through. Yeah, man. Wow, side one. Oof. So now we get to side two, and here's where things really get fun and really interesting because I'll admit at the time, and I'm of a certain age that I was experiencing these in real time, this threw me. And I We're wasn't sure about it, right? No, I yeah. didn't know what to expect. It was way over my head. Yeah. Um, and then years and years later, you know, it has changed. So we, let's start with Gallus Pole. Um, it's a traditional song arranged by Page and Plant. Uh, originally by a poem from Francis James Child, the, the Maid Freed from the Gallows. Um, it's a later, uh, Lead Belly did an interpretation of it later, which inspired Zeppelin to do theirs. Um, story of someone who's who's headed to the polls, gallows pole, and wondering if their friends brought silver or gold to see if they could bribe the hangs men to spare their life. Um, you know, the track starts out gentle, and it just keeps building intensity. A second acoustic track comes in. The chorus adds banjo. We add a little bit of bass, do, 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 and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, here comes Bonham. And if you think you have to be electric to be heavy, guess again. Mm -hmm. Because this is an acoustic track with Bonham. And it's still super heavy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just... Some silver. I brought it out. Oh. oh my God. And I love how it just keeps building and building and building and there's a great fun solo that's kind of recessed in the mix at the end as it goes out which is really effective i just think it's a super song and this gets way overlooked oh as, totally. as a standout oh. track in this album another great fade out too it kind of yeah it so out. we get to number seven tangerine this is from pa uh jimmy page and he also did the lyrics the only song that plant did not do lyrics on uh, this one was originally written for the Yardbirds, and they attempted to record it, but didn't work. Now, I love the little subtle count off at the beginning. 
one, two, if false start, one, two, three, four, one, two, and it comes. And I'm like, that's cool that they left that in there. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of audio verite on this record, if you listen closely. <clears throat> yeah. You know, yeah. A lot of things in the background and stuff they kept in. And, you know, it's a, a full acoustic st song. We've got great, great vocals from Plant. Now we have pedal steel in here. And there was certainly no pedal steel on the first two albums. <laughs> Nowhere near anything. Yeah. And now this is really showing their folky, uh, you know, kind of country folk side. Yeah. You know? And yeah. you say, well, that what's what's that got to do with Zeppelin? Well, do your history, folks. Country and blues and are all part of what made rock. You can't leave that country aspect out of it. It's yeah. it's an ingredient in the soup. Um, you know, <laughs> true, true, true that. Yep. And you know, it's really fun here, and it's great bass playing. And bottom is so restrained but tasty yeah he's just yeah you know i love how the solo kicks in with this completely uh, crazy thick distorted overdriven tone which is so different than the rest of the backing tracks and yeah. john and you know bonham and jones are just laying it down so foundationally so subtle and, yeah yes and then it gets to the third verse which really has a strong country feel to it. Um, and then it breaks down back to the acoustic before it ends out. And I'm like, another track that just doesn't get it any real love or respect. And they're like, oh, it's, it's, it's side two's filler. No, 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 not in where I live, you know? And uh, so we get to the eighth track um that's the way now i will say this categorically tom mm -hmm. um that this is my favorite acoustic number in their whole catalog um i just think it's oh, got cool. carryover elements it's got the pedal steel i think when it goes to the chorus <clears throat> i think it's one of the most beautiful and and eloquently sung uh lines from plant it's just it's it's like a big warm blanket it's just <laughs> That's you know it's just it yeah. feels really great and here's where you know written while they were taking long walks out at the cottage mm -hmm. you know page had a guitar with him and he played the opening and, and plant laid down a verse and they had a recorder and there it is you know, Jimmy's on guitar, pedal steel, dulcimer. Jones is playing mandolin, no drums. He does add tambourine at the end, which is a really nice touch. Um, but Page and Plant said this track would have never happened if they're not where they were at the time in the environment that they were in. A song like this doesn't just doesn't no, happen. No. So, you know, environment does matter. Yep. And then we get to the Brandy AR stomp, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I think this is a, a heavy foot stomping track. Strong two beat from bottom. Boom, bah, boom, da, boom, da. Uh, you yeah. know, it written between the relationship between Plant and his dog Strider. Okay. Who's named after Aragon from the Lord of the Rings. So we've got more Tolkien stuff coming here. Here we go. Um, again, written at the cottage. Um, great double vocals uh from plant um and what's great is you go hear this live because they would do acoustic sets especially during the 75 tour um this would come out and john bonham would sing the harmony and just absolutely nails it Hill john's it. got a great voice yeah i've seen i've seen video of that and it's like it's he's yeah. you're a great job with that huge bass drum and the high hat, boom, check, boom, check, boom, check. Boom. And for me, that had to have been an influence um, when you listen to Queen's uh, A Night at the Opera and listen to 39 and the way yeah, they, yeah. the way they did that live. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar, yeah, with Roger Taylor with the... Yep. Yeah, the, yep. The yep. Tambourine. And I love the line, you're the finest dog I knew so fine. <laughs> no. 
just simple. Yeah. Uh, when you're old and your eyes are dim, you ain't no Shep gonna happen again. We'll go walking down country lane. I'll sing the same old song. Hear me call your name. And live he yells out, Strider! Oh, I've heard that. I didn't know what it meant. There you go. Earl's never... Court, Earl's Court, Earl's London. Court. Yes. Yep. Earl's Court. Yeah, I was always wondering what it, what the, what that was. There you and go. He yells out the dog. He yells out the dog's name. Strider. Yeah. Yep. Got it. So we get to the end. We have a, a traditional piece. Hats off to Roy Harper. Um, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, it's it's kind of a big tribute to the blues and the early roots of of rock and roll. Uh, a lot of heavy slide, a lot of phased vocal things going on here. I mean, I mean it's there. I mean, if it was left off, I would have been okay. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, that's a, uh, an interesting way to close a record. Yeah. They yeah. don't bring back a heavy track like they certainly did on uh, two, you know, closing it out with, with bring it on home. Um, so it was an interesting choice here and it's just a very eclectic and very wide range of styles and feels and compositions. And the, that's my assessment of step three. So. Great job, Peter. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to run through three really fast, sure. um, real quick and probably echoing most of this. This is always what happens. I always go second and I oh. echo. <laughs> I echo a lot Sorry. of the things that have already no, but it's okay. That's the way it wrote the way we roll. And I go fast because a lot of this stuff has already been been mentioned. Um, so Zeppelin three uh, released on October fifth, nineteen seventy. Um, as you mentioned, they this is the first time they went to Headley Grange and used the Stones mobile. Um, like you said, to make records with a mobile, right? Uh, you know that except for Deep Purple was in Montreux, right? That's so nice. um, so anyway. Uh, immigrant song i mean what can be said you 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 said it perfectly it's like it's like a gut punch i mean it's just it, the, it's that first that you, know, you hear that count and like you said ch you hear that if you listen closely you hear that count to boom and then it just hits you you're like whoa uh so what a pummeling i mean opening with a pummeling rocker i have only zepp can do this uh mm -hmm. it's it's pummeling but it still has swing i said what a riff and what a vocal um just just timeless timeless rock um on i mean my kids love my girls love this song like it's like it's such a heavy rocker and they just love it to death of course right. they saw it on school of rock that was the first time they had seen it and they just thought, loved it um and like you said what a huge left turn with friends i mean uh from from immigrant song um Alternate tunings, as you mentioned, with Bombay inspired strings with John and I have John Paul Jones, baby. It's like he this is where he steps up and you're like, this is his he's doing those strings, you know, and those strings are so haunting and so beautiful. I love the acoustic, excellent vocal from Robert. Amazing. Love friends to death. Right into Celebration Day, that um, that synth, that wow, wow. That happened because they 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 didn't record his drum. The drums got wiped at the beginning or something. Something happened, but it like you as you mentioned, it works perfectly because it kind of holds off. And the mm -hmm. you know, and then and it's just like let, letting Paige kind of do that thing, and then it just like you said that rhythm section boom comes in. Oh, it's just so cool! What a cool song! I love the riff, pure Jimmy Page. The live version on Song Remains the Same is even better. In my opinion, it's a little bit sloppier, but it's powerful and celebration. Mm -hmm. Oh, another killer track. Right. Since I've been loving you, as you said, it's a, I have a standard blues, kind of a throwback to Zeppelin one and two, but um, done with a little bit more. I don't know how to describe it. A little more push and pull, maybe a little bit more dynamic because uh, it's sort of a slow burn. And uh, as you said, that vocal at the end, is just like, oh, Robert's just killing it um out on the tiles love it what a cool riff uh as you said bottom had a hand in writing it um and out on the tiles means out on the bars i guess i didn't know that that until recently that yep. that i guess it's like slang for being you know yep. hitting the bars um so uh and he, he used to do that riff before black dog live he would do that uh as an intro riff that out on the tiles thing 
because I remember seeing a lift a live clip and going, oh, that's out of the tiles, you know. And then they go into, uh, hey, hey, mom. <laughs> and they always went to something else, which kind of made me frustrated because I wanted to hear the song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to hear out of the tiles <laughs> totally. Um, so as you flip it over, Gallows Paul, amazing. Uh, I just, as you were gushing about it, I'm, I'm going to do the same. I love this track. It kind of sounds like an old school country jamboree or something, uh, but what a great groove. I mean, in cool lyrics, you know, bring me some silver, bring me some gold, you know, get me out of the hangman. I mean, love it. Uh, again, J John Paul Jones on mandolin, just killing it. Um, Tangerine, um, you had mentioned that it's a Yardbirds track from 1968, which is true. Um, really, I just have really simple but effective. And and I think they were they were a little bit um, influenced also by the country rock thing and the CSN. And they were affected by the um, the West Coast rock thing a little bit, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and, and that and that shows up, Tom. Sorry to interrupt. So you know, right. a, a lot of the times during uh, improvs. Uh, you know, if you're going to San Francisco, be sure to wear some flowers in your hair. Robert was aware and had a lot of connection to that. Yeah. So it really kind of just, you know, verifies what you were just saying, that it wasn't just something that was happening way over on the coast that they didn't pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Robert especially was into it, I think, more than Jimmy was. Um right. Because Jimmy's like, oh, Robert was into that whole West Coast thing. I don't know how into that I was, but, um, but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, that's the go. That's the way. I just have. Oh man, this is at another level. And such a great melody. Up and that whole up and down guitar part, so hypnotizing. Steel guitar part is so cool. Just an amazing song. That's the way. Just oh, like you said, it's just like it's just it's. I can't even describe it. It's just amazing track. I love that. Mm -hmm. Love it to death. Braun Your Stomp is just pure fun. They sound like they're having a blast. Um, sounds like an old school hoedown, like you said, with the with the bottom, you know. Right. It's just so cool. Um, just sounds like a little really fun track. And then I I agree. I have my notes are exactly the same as far as hats off to Roy Harper. It's cool that they saluted Roy Harper. That's cool. Um, but really basically it's Shake 'em on Down by Buka White. Oh, okay. It's basically a blues cover. And I, I just, this is the one track where I go, hmm, you're ending the album with this. It, it's kind of, <clears throat> kind of a strained way to end the record. Um, and to think that they had poor Tom and they also had, which I love on mm -hmm. Kona, and they also had, um, Hey, Hey, what can I do? Yes. I'm like, imagine if one of those tracks had been instead of that. I mean, this album would just be even better. Right. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Crazy. Well, and it was it was 43 minutes and four seconds for 1970. That's long. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You could have taken the three and some change of Harper off. Yeah. And still been at right around 40 minutes, and it would have yeah. you would have never thought you'd been shortchanged. That's a good point. That's a really good point. And um, yeah, absolutely. For for that time period, especially, that's kind of yeah, long. Very long. But apparently they had 16 tracks um, to choose from. So um, at the time. So anyway, um, excellent record. That's my take on Zeppelin three. Um, I point out real quick that it, it did reach number one in both the US and the UK um, and has been certified six times platinum in the US. With a caveat, it, my research says they haven't been recertified since 1999. My guess is that number is substantially low. Yeah, yeah, and 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 people were waiting for that record. I mean, they were they were a huge band by the time three came out. They were people were waiting. They were by you know getting in line to buy that album for sure. Um. So and what a what a left turn for them, and it and it's just so successful. So right. <clears throat> So let's let's move on to well let's keep it moving let's move on to Zeppelin I try to keep these under an hour if I can, yep. um, let's move on to Zeppelin four um, and wow another <laughs> another masterpiece so let's just move on to another amazing record Zeppelin four so uh, take it away Peter alrighty well you know this one if you look up the chronological order of things because they literally started recording this almost only a couple of months after three was released 
they went and started. They didn't take any tour requests. They didn't rest much. <laughs> no, they but they stopped touring for this period and were focusing simply on on recording. Um, yeah. You can call the album whatever you want. Four is also entitled Ruins, Symbols, whatever. Yeah, you call it. yeah. So, yeah, I've heard um, of things. Clearly, we open up with Black Dog. Um, you know, this is uh, comes from a dog that used to hang around Headley Grange during recording. Uh, lyrics are about a relationship that hasn't gone very well. Lots of hey baby, ooh baby, pretty baby stuff <laughs> going on here. And maybe not the most uh, lyrically strong, but the music is just crushingly heavy. Yeah. Um, great interplay between uh, Bonham and Jones and Page. They get to that middle section instrumentally. They're playing across each other. Their bar lines are not meshing until all of a sudden, oh yeah, oh yeah, and then they go. It's brilliantly done and very challenging to play live. Um, really strong vocals from Plant. Um, you know, it was kind of inspired by Oh Well from Fleetwood Mac. Oh, interesting, having, yeah. Having, having an acapella vocal yep. section with a response, call and response, a very traditional blues element. Um, and all the way out, the riff just, Ba -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. It just goes all the way in, until the end. It's it's a great opener, concert staple, and you know it's infamous for most singers forgetting which lyric came next. So you always kind of goof, goof <laughs> yeah. your lyrics up. And it's another "Where's the one?" Right? It's another well, one. Well, yeah. speaking of nice segue here, let's get to rock and roll. Right. And one of the most famous drum intros of all time. And the difficulty here, folks, this does not start on one. No, it doesn't. It starts on the end of three. Mm -hmm. So let's just do this real simple. Next time you can look it up. If you're having troubles getting the length of it, do the introduction to Johnny Be Good. It's exactly rhythmically the same. One, two, three. Na 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 Five bars, perfect length, start on the end of three, straight eighth notes all the way across, four more bars, you're good to go. Yeah, and you always Never miss, you hear drummers again. murdering this all the time. Oh, and the whole band's looking at him like, right. where is it? I come in, yeah. yeah. So clearly Bonham got this from Keep a Knockin', uh, Little oh. Richard. Oh. Um, you know, it, it just, and then from here, Bonham just drives like a freight train. You yeah. know, and it's just just bashing through super strong vocals. Um, you know, it's a very, very kind of early 50s kind of vibe to it, but heavier, obviously. You know, it does have that Chuck Berry element to it. A lot of the same kind of chordal structures and motifs and things. It's kind of just old school rock. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like um, Chuck Berry on steroids. Yeah, yeah, you know, some great breaks when, when Robert sings or when the drums play through. And of course, we get to the end and we've got that stunning short drum fill outro from uh, from Bonham. You know, yes, it's it's played to death, but you know what? You can't deny it. It's just stunning. Undeniable. Yeah. We get to Battle of Evermore, exceptionally strong acoustic track. And I would suggest this, Tom, this doesn't happen if Zeppelin 3 hasn't been released first. Agreed. Because those acoustic numbers that they took a chance with and experimented with become refined. And the ones that show up later are the benefactors of the maturity of writing those earlier tracks. Not that the other ones aren't as mature, they are. But this song is a result of what had happened. Um, no question members. no question um additional vocals from sandy denny who you may know from fairport convention if you're into that uh it's a celtic it's got mostly mandolin but it's kind of dark and mystical very tolkien of course the battle <laughs> of good and evil you know it may even have some uh king arthur and legend in there i'm waiting for the angels of avalon that's the king arthur reference Is there. It? okay yeah. Um, no percussion, um, but Bonham did add live. Um, and this is just, you know, um, a track that live, obviously you had to, to alter quite a bit. There was no Sandy. Uh, John Paul Jones would 
um, add some vocals occasionally and not always work. Um, so let's get to Stairway to Heaven and we'll just, you know what, I'll just make it simple. It's what it is. Everybody knows what it is. It's a beautiful composition. It builds from nothing to immense. <clears throat> the feel of it is perfect. The lyrics are perfect. It may be one of Jimmy's best solo sections. Solo, yeah. It's yeah. So melodic. Uh, Bonham's beautiful triplet feel in the middle. And it just ends. And is there a more famous line than she's buying a stairway to heaven as it ends? Yeah. I'm not going to beat a dead horse on here. This one okay, is... What else can be said? Yeah. Yeah. So we get to side two. And here's where I think things are kind of more fun. We get Misty Mountain Hop <clears throat> with... Uh, Jones on keys doubled by page and a real heavy straightforward and I think this is how this is Bonham sounds the best so far of any of their records on this track his drums are so clean so transparent and huge yeah, and so they just sound unbelievable I agree yeah and what's beautiful here is you know we've got a great overdub bass line on here as well um because he's not playing all that on keys um the verses aren't always rhythmically symmetrical either and that's what i love because a lyric may take it over the bar line and then they'll catch up and then they'll go and i love how they did that because it's just not formulated straight straight they do what rush does if the if the lyrics need five beats they'll go five they'll beats. go five <laughs> yeah just go five yeah. and we'll hit one together and it'll be fine uh, great thick uh, harmonies uh, during the uh, verses. Um, solos double tracked, which I think is, sounds great. Um, I love huge fill at the end. Feeling <clears throat> <laughs> back, and he goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and thankfully, this track hasn't really been overplayed to death. So I mean, I always always enjoy when I hear this one. Mm -hmm. four sticks this is a, a drumming tour de force this is this is fun um a great kind of drony um one kind of chord undertone while everything goes over the top you know and bottom just lays down that you know it just sounds great plants vocals are a little different here they are a little more pinched a little more nasally, but it works. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that full rich tone like you would get on That's the Way or something like that. Um, you know, it's just got such a great feel. And I love when it breaks into that second section. Uh, that is it's my just, favorite part of the song. That's yeah. just goosebumps. It is. Just, my hair goes up. Yeah. yeah. And then right back into that driving, driving rhythm again um you know it's just everything about this song reminds me of when this album came out because i remember that spot more than any track on here it's just like i remember it. it's on my turntable i'm in my bedroom it's mm -hmm. it's it's that time and place all over again yeah um really cool song uh, going to california super strong number here beautiful mandolin and guitar this is Robert's lower range, which is very rich and very soothing. Um, and Paige and Jones work so well together. Uh, simple story of a man looking for love and heading out to try and find his dreams reality. You know, mm -hmm. um, and the bridge is just oh, so gorgeous. And, you know, la, 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 la. I mean, it's just... Yeah. Trying to find a woman who's never, never, never been born. I mean, it's just perfect. It's yeah. just a beautiful, beautiful track. Well, we're going to get to the end here. And as a drummer, I have to talk about this for a second. Here yeah, we go. You, you, have, levy, to. you have to. Yeah. The levy breaks. Now, as, as infamous as the intro to rock and roll is, I don't think there's a single bottom moment that has been lifted, sampled, copied, broken down than the intro to when the levee breaks mm -hmm. um the story it's very simple yeah he was getting a new kit from ludwig and instead of putting it into the rehearsal where area where they were the tech set it up in the hallway at headley grange and they left it there 
And when they were hearing how the reverberation and the acoustics of the hall and the high ceilings in the stairwell were in, affecting the drums, pop a couple mics up on top and off he goes. Add a tiny little Benson wreck echo on there and you've got one of the most menacing drum <laughs> feels of all time. Unreal, unreal. And, and what is beautiful here, and I would just do this very quickly. The beauty of the instruments like this is that Bonham self-regulated his balancing. Most, a lot of players now, you've got mics all over your kit. You go, oh, my tom's not high. Can you bring it up? No, Bonham played EQ'd. <laughs> so when he would, yeah. so when he would play the toms, they were the same volume as his snare and his kick and everything else. He had to be. Andy Johns only had three or four mics on the entire kit. I was just going to say it's like two or three mics max. At the most. Yeah. That was the Johns way. Yeah. Let the kit be a kit. Let yeah. it breathe. And Bonham did the rest. Unbelievable. That's unreal. It really it's is. a massive, massive talent. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously the groove on this is lethal. The <laughs> harmonica is just it's awesome. Lethal. Oh, and it is just, and it's, of course, a story of the great Mississippi flood of 1927. Um, it's done by other blues people. You can look it up. Um, but it was a great tragedy. Hundreds killed, thousands displaced. You know, and so it's a dark, depressing song. So it never becomes positive. You know, there's no major chords anywhere to be found in any of it's just dark and brooding. And it just all comes back to that feel. And what a feel. What a feel. So uh, un unlike the previous, this is a stunning way yeah. to end it yeah exactly this this is like that's the way to end a record and then yeah. when it goes you know that that yeah. that riff at the end is like yeah you're that. just like wow yeah what was that yeah yeah exactly um so yeah zep zep four zoso runes whatever you want to call it um i'm gonna jump into it black dog never gets old to me i've heard it a thousand times still mesmerizing um the whole stop start thing like i didn't think about the whole oh well by fluid mac right um you know a lot of people i think a lot of british bands were were influenced by that peter green version of fleetwood mac I think so too. um yeah it was and um and i just have apparently it was a john paul jones riff that that uh the writ the mm. uh, he, i guess he was messing around with it and page was like what's that you're playing what is that um but what a start to the record what an amazing solo i have play it loud in caps uh what a great performance you just can't i've heard it a million times i still absolutely love it rock and roll same thing apparently just appeared out of nowhere when bonzo was frustrated trying to get four sticks i guess he, he was they were trying to get a take on four sticks and it was frustrating him so finally he just went into keep like you said he went into keep a knock and 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 page just jumped in and it right. just became a classic song. Um, and that's a great, I never thought of it that way. Chuck Berry on steroids. It's kind of true. It's kind of yeah. like a fifties song with like done really heavy. Right. Um, Battle of Evermore. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? I mean, what a massive shift, first of all, to go from rock and roll to Battle of Evermore. Um, just absolutely majestic takes you to another place. I have memories like you had mentioned about sitting, listening to this album in my living room, right? Looking out the window. I have a very specific memory. It takes me every time I hear this song, it takes me back to me as a 13 year old sitting there listening to this album, looking at the, at the album going, who are these guys? Like there's no pictures anywhere. There's no, what is this music? Who is this? And um, Sandy Denny from Fairport Vention and man, Apparently she was exhausted after singing her part, she said, because you're trying to keep up with Robert Plant. It's not easy. Um, but she just kills it. I mean, she absolutely kills it on this song. Uh, and so does he. I mean, the two vocals yes. together just, 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 oh, it's like, what? I mean, just unbelievable. That song just gets me every time. I, I Every single time. Absolute classic. Battle of Evermore. Stairway to Heaven. As you said, what can be said? It's it's been you've been told a million times. Um, it's a classic. It's a classic for a reason. 
um, you know, whether you like it or not. Uh, right. Robert, Robert seems to have disowned it in recent years for some reason. He doesn't like the lyrics or something, or he kind of acts like he doesn't like love the song anymore. But um, I still think it's great. It's still a great song. Um, Misty Mountain Hop, what a groove, as you said. I, I just have great groove. Love the drums. <laughs> I mean, right. Jacku, ju, ju, I mean, that is just what I, right. whoa. It uh, swings like crazy. Yeah, just un unreal. Uh, and I love John Paul Jones on the keys. You know, he's just, he's he's in lockstep with Bonham the whole time. Four Sticks, oh my God, my favorite. What a unique riff and with the timing. Where is the one I have again? Bono playing with Four Sticks. You can hear them clicking as he's playing. Mm -hmm. Unreal. Um, the synths at the end, like you mentioned, the da 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 Oh, it's like... That part is just, that is Zeppelin for me. That's like the pinnacle of Zeppelin. Um, there's something about that track. It just gives me the chills. Can't get enough of it. Going to California, exquisite, totally mellow, but so good. Um, it sounds like they're sitting in your living room playing for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, John Paul Jones, again, secret weapon with his mandolin playing. Such a cool melody. The harmonies at the end, you know, the... Ah, it's just like, yes. wait, whoa, it's just, yeah. just love it. Levy breaks. Wow. You said it all. The drum sound is just absolutely revolutionary for 1970. I mean, no one heard drums like this. Yeah. Nobody. You'd never been trying to copy it ever since. Yeah. You'd never heard drums like this ever on a record. I mean, this was the first time and you know, that Cha cha, do do do, cha cha. He's not doing two hits. It's it's a it's the echo. He's playing the off echo. the echo. So cool. Um, still blows me away after all these years. Still, I mean, it's just unreal. Genesis heard it and they tried to do. They did squonk, and it's like it's not even close to the levy breaks. Uh, but they loved it. They heard it. I mean, other bands were hearing it and going, "Oh my god, what was that?" Like, wow. Um amazing end to the record as as you had said i said and i have i, I could my notes i couldn't help it at the end i said no filler all killer yeah <laughs> just, it's just like unbelievable album so um so that's my little take on on zeppelin four um so uh so yeah so now comes the the uh moment of truth between these and look at the and the artwork i mean the artwork on this one is really cool it's it's yeah. it, it's based on like a uh i don't know what's a clock there's a name for it lovelli or lovell or is l-o-v-e-l-l-e -L -L -E? yes yes and it spins yeah spins the wheel spins here and you can see the different faces of the band members and all the right. artwork and, and it's so cool um it really delayed the release because the album cover took longer than it should have and what a, I mean, great, great shot of the band killer, there in the back. Photos. And yeah. then, uh, and then this, I mean, whoa, this still, whoops. Um, I mean, this Zeppelin Four. I just love, absolutely love the artwork. And, and well, and that's Paige's reaction. We heard Plants about not talking to anybody for a year and a half. This was Paige's response. Yeah, I'm we're not, not putting, putting any, our name on the album. I'm not putting any words. No, nothing. Yep. And, you know, because a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of reviewers were saying, oh, Zeppelin's a hype. They're a hype. They're all hype. And it's like, he said, you know what? Watch this. I'm going to put out the next album with nothing on it. And it's still right. going to sell. Right. That's how much of a hype we're not. We're not a hype. Right. We're the opposite. Uh, we won't even, we won't even try to promote the album. It'll just come out and sell like hotcakes and we won't even put anything on it. And he didn't. 24 million in the U.S. alone. Yeah. So people were just like dying to buy this record. It didn't matter what it was. It could have had, it could have had Mickey Mouse on the cover. People would have bought it in 24 million yep. copies. Um, so, so the moment of truth comes here. It comes Peter. So if you had to choose between Zeppelin three and these two records they are both amazing, but if you had to pick, which one would you have to pick? All right. My rankings are as follows. Led Zeppelin four. I give a 9.25 out of 10. <laughs> well, if anybody who's watched me, I can't have things with the same numbers. So most of mine are all 25 basis points away from Got each it. other. I like how specific you are. I love it. Led Zeppelin three is currently at a 9.5. So winner for me is 
Zeppelin three. Wow. All right. Zeppelin three wins it for you. Yep. Wow. It just keeps year after year, just keeps rising. Keeps rising in the ranks. I love it. I love it. And it's so true for me too. I mean, the Zeppelin three has risen in the ranks a ton for me. I don't know what it's just, you need to be mature to understand it or get it. Um, but uh but i agree with you Led zeppelin three has this album has risen in the ranks for me big time um and it's just got nothing but better every time i listen to it um, the versatility of it the breadth of composition and like i said before i think that is zeppelin's most important album because that is the transitional album from two to what happens after mm -hmm. that is it yeah that's that's the album that's true. That's exactly right. That's a great, great point. And like you said, things like going to California uh, wouldn't happen without That's the Way or Tangerine. Right. You know, setting setting the bar. Right. Um, so I'm I am going to I'm going to do a, a. I have to go. I'm going to say Zeppelin three is a nine point two five and that Zeppelin four is a nine point five. There you go. I'm going to switch it around because I, I can't help it. I just have to go with Zeppelin four as much as I want to. I mean, and there's no wrong answer here. There's absolutely, I always say in these battles, there's no, they're both amazing. Uh, they're both almost 10 out of 10 records. I mean, literally uh, this, this could be close to a 10. I mean, maybe this is a 9.8. I don't know. It's close to a 10. It's an unbelievable record. Um, I just have so many clear memories of listening. Like I said, listening to this and just, being mind blown. And it's still to this day, I'll put it on and still certain tracks like four sticks and, right. um, and, and Misty mountain hop and, um, and battle of evermore just blow my and levy breaks blow my mind still to this day. Right. So unbelievable. Um, so I have to go with Zeppelin four on this one, but, but it's, it's all close. It's very, very, very close with this one. This is not that far behind at all. It's a very, it's like a, it's like a, you know, one of those where the, the swimming races where it's like the hand hits right before the other one, you know, uh, those Olympic swimmers where you're like, who won the race? I can't even tell. <laughs> well, if you would have replaced Harper with either poor Tom or what was the other one? Yeah. Well, hey, hey, what can I do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that, I, that might be, that might reverse it. I don't know. Cause what I if, oh, right? poor Tom. I love that track. Yeah. What if? Do 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 that just <laughs> another great bottom groove. They're all great. Here's the tale of Tom. Words of Beth was wrong, but what the cookies mean? Yep. You can say the sound, sound. This drums are immense. Yeah, yeah. Well, Peter, man, this was fun. We gotta yeah. we gotta wrap it up at some point because we could I always say on these we can both anybody who's on this channel we can we're music geeks we can talk forever, right? right? We can we love music we can talk this we're just here to talk about our albums that we absolutely love, and this is another no exception in this episode. Um, so um, Peter, you did an amazing job. Thank well, you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Pleasure's mine. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's really been a great time, and uh, and I can't fault your choice at all i think it's great that you picked three that's awesome um and you know viewers if you're still with us i always say thank you you're, you're a diehard if you're still listening still watching um and uh we i love my viewers so uh if you like what you see please please give it a like please subscribe um it, it just helps the channel helps me to do more uh, if you like, so you've liked this content, I'm going to do more of it, but you got to like, and subscribe. So please do that. If you're, if you're still watching, um, and thank you very much to my guest, Peter Jones. And, um, I really appreciate you coming on the channel. Thank you. And, um, thanks again, everybody. And we'll see you next time on Curlis mania. Have a good one.